any of you know what the singularity is, the technological singularity? If you've heard of this, that's the point in time, or this hypothetical moment when artificial intelligence will surpass human intelligence, and it'll lead to the world being a really strange, unpredictable, chaotic place. So to get a better understanding of what this might look like, uh, imagine you have a puppy and you come home and your puppy's been really bad and you can't yell at him because the poor little guy won't get it. You didn't catch him in the act and so he, the puppy won't link the cause and effect of this. He won't look at the destroyed throw pillow and you scolding him and, and link the two. We take for granted that we're at the top of this food chain here of intelligence um, and and uh, imagine what it might feel like to be in the puppy situation. So post, um, post singularity, this is what um, it'll be like to us and our robot overlords here. Um, we'll be incapable of comprehending the cause and effect that, uh, that would take place. Um, and we're, we're not quite as passive as puppies. People don't generally tolerate injustice or misjustice very well. So when's this all gonna happen? There was a singularity summit in 2012 that took place. Um, Stuart Armstrong did a study where he analyzed all these experts' opinions on when the singularity might happen, and what he found was that r the span was about the next century, but the mean year was 2040, which is pretty close. Today, I wanted to take this chance at the What If conference to go on the record, really for the first time ever, and say, I'm not sure it's gonna happen this way. What if, what if there was another option for the way this is all gonna go down? See, Evolution has been an incredibly powerful force for millions of years, and it created and refined you and me and our throw pillow destroying little puppies, although we kind of put some finishing touches on them. So what if the force of evolution is more powerful than this technology we're creating? What if the artificial intelligence that we create is gonna, in fact, drive the next major evolutionary leap in life? And what if that's gonna happen this century? Today, we use technology to enhance our lives. So we use robots and machines to move things, to, to build stuff, and to communicate. But let's change roles for a second. So let's imagine, imagine you guys are robots. You're artificially intelligent, sentient beings, and you're looking at me here, a human, and thinking, how can I use that? How, how, how is this a tool for you? One of the things you might find compelling about what's going on here in this organic pile of goo is data storage. It's, you're gonna be really hard pressed, you robots out there, to find a better, more efficient, more durable, density efficient way of storing data than DNA. Or how about data processing efficiency? This is absolutely incredible. So our, our computers today are pretty powerful, but if we wanted to have the processing ability of the human mind, we would need a computer at today's capacity. We would need a computer bigger than this room. And for those of you watching online, we're in a theater here. There's a, a balcony. I can barely see the back of the room. This place is big. We would need a computer bigger than this place to be able to match the processing power of our mind. And that computer would need its own power plant just to run it, and it would literally take a river to cool that computer down so that it doesn't melt. Our brains, on the other hand, use just 20 watts of energy. And I got a few drinking buddies who I suspect are even less than that. <laughs> um, so rather than exist separate from us, what if technology were to become part of us at the most fundamental genetic level? What if machines could read, write, copy, and paste our DNA? What if cells could talk not only to each other, they already do that via cellular messaging, but um, what if they could talk to the external world, to computers? We call machines hardware, but what if we start to view our bodies as wetware? It's actually happening in some ways. So currently, where we're at is scientists have done all sorts of cool things, and I could go on for days about all this awesome stuff that's happening, but a couple really neat ones are people who are totally blind. They can attach a camera to the retinas and transmit images through the optic nerve so that people who were completely blind, they're now to the point where they can drive cars around a parking lot, not in traffic, but they can actually drive a car. That's absolutely remarkable. And then this one is crazy. So I, there was a study at Berkeley done by Nishimoto and Gallant. They'd show people an image, put them in an FRI machine, F fMRI machine, and then they would analyze their brain and look at which areas of the brain were active. And from the pattern of activity, they could extract an image that is remarkably similar to the one that people are looking at. So we can literally read minds. They can pull pictures from your brain. So this, this interface, this communication between the body and, the, and machines is already beginning to be developed. 
where I came in on this, I did some work on a theoretical biorobotic interface consisting of nanorobots, which I call autobiobots. Um, they're theoretical because we can't build on this small of a scale yet, but we understand the way molecules and atoms work. Think of them as Lego blocks, and to get an idea for the scale of size that I'm talking about here, um, in 12-point font, if you, you in the period in 12-point font, you would have to make that the size of Chicago in order to be able to see these Lego blocks that I'm talking about. Um, but uh, so these nanorobots, these autobiobots, theoretically would exist in every nucleate cell of your body, and they do a few things. But most importantly, they are able to write new genes and able to turn those genes on and off in any cell of your body at any time. The consequences of this are absolutely profound. So we could literally download any biological adaptation we've seen in life. So one example, uh, hibernation is an interesting one. Uh, when bears hibernate, their body temperature drops to just a few degrees above freezing, and they consume 2% of the oxygen that they would normally consume when they're alive and running around. Now, that would be really handy for interstellar travel if we were on a trip to Mars. Imagine, imagine the consequences there. And there's no reason to stop at something basic and simple like hibernation here. A successful implementation of these autobiobots platform will make everything, literally everything we've observed in life, possible. So life exists in some incredibly extreme environments. At the bottom of the ocean, under massive pressure, or there's life forms that can literally exist in the vacuum of space. And some life doesn't require oxygen at all, ever. So keep in mind, all of this is accomplished through DNA. The same DNA that's in you, in me, in our cute little pillow-destroying puppies. And DNA is all built on four building blocks, A, T, G, and C. Evolution has already found some, uh, some of the answers to some of these really complex problems that I mentioned. But imagine what might happen if we machines that are smarter than us were to begin writing new genetic sequences and finding new answers to things. In the end, I think this is what's going to happen. Um, because the fluid potential and adaptability for life far surpasses any other medium out there. So back, back to my original question here. What if this century life will seamlessly fuse with robotics? I, I, and, and, and this isn't that big of a leap from where we are right now. What we're talking about is already happening. So what are the consequences of all of this? Um, do our bodies really matter? What if they didn't? And what if all this organic and inorganic goo that we're made of that we call life is merely just a substrate for thoughts and ideas? And what if the entire purpose of life is just to be able to pass along and communicate these ideas? Do we even need life at all? I offer you all these what ifs here today, and I'm gonna leave you with one certainty. It's that life is on the brink of a profound struggle between technologically driven evolution and a residentialist self-preservation. Thank you very much.